Over the course of the past year, I've built this large solar array behind me along with the batteries and inverter to create an, a true off-grid system, which is gonna help us become more energy independent. I did a lot of this work myself, uh, made a lot of the parts for it, so you're gonna see a lot of DIY, uh, but I had a lot of support from you guys online as well as my wife and help from this little one. Now, if you want to see any details of any part of this project, I have a large playlist that you can go back and check out. This array is made out of 12 LG solar panels. Each solar panel is rated at 365 watts to make the total array about 4.3 kilowatts. Every panel is bolted using this stainless steel hardware to this galvanized Z channel. And there are star washers on the back side to bond everything for the ground. This galvanized Z channel is actually a reclaimed product that I pulled out of a field. Everything is sitting on some used railroad ties, which is the foundation. This does not go in the ground, so the whole system is ballasted with a little over 3,000 pounds worth of weight on the base. I added some diagonal bracing to keep everything from racking. Now these panels are arranged in three strings, four panels in each string. All those strings come together to this box. This is called a combiner box, and inside we have three circuit breakers. These are 350 volt DC rated circuit breakers, 15 amps each. So all the positives come in here and everything gets tied together and combined into a single uh, positive and a single negative wire that go through this conduit and back to the garage. All of this is grounded to a grounding rod which also comes up and bonds to the frames on each side. The wires from the solar panels all come down to this elbow, which is called an LB, and go inside the garage. I'll take you inside there now. Up top, we have the large lithium battery pack. This is out of a used car, uh, and the car was in an accident, and then I was able to salvage the batteries from that. It's out of a Chevy Volt 2016. The battery pack is rated at 18.4 kilowatt hours, and I can get about 14.3 kilowatt hours of usable energy out of it. Now, when I took this out of the car, it was originally designed as one giant battery, but I broke it into eight smaller batteries, each one with 12 cells. That's why I have eight positives and eight negatives coming down to my two large bus bars. Each individual battery is fused with one of these small fuses inside these cases. They come to these aluminum bus bars. Now I put a lot of time into cleaning those aluminum bus bars, but they didn't cost me anything because I had the scrap aluminum sitting around. They're sprayed down with a protectant to keep them from oxidizing. And so I have the positive bus bar here and the negative bus bar over here. This is a BMV 712 battery monitor from Victron. It allows me to see the state of charge, SOC, of the batteries. It also tells me how much electricity is flowing in or flowing out. I charge the batteries with a Victron charge controller over on the side, and I draw electricity out using this inverter. I'll get to both of those in a second. Now inside this steel box, inside this steel enclosure are my breakers for the DC side of things. Right there is the conduit coming from those solar panels outside. We have one positive wire and one negative wire. These are six gauge. We also have the grounding wire coming in from that grounding rod and going up to the bus bar up top. That positive wire comes over to this double pole breaker. This breaker is called the ground fault protection device. If there's any current flowing on that ground, it will shut the system off. It's a safety feature. Then both positive and negative wires come up here to the charge controller. This charge controller is made by Victron and it's their 250-100 model. 
That means it can take up to 250 volts from the solar panels and supply up to 100 amps to the batteries. Now the solar panels are supplying electricity under fairly small amperage, which is why I can use this 6 gauge wire for the supply side. But then the battery side is using this 2 gauge wire because it's a much higher amperage and lower voltage. That's one of the benefits of using an MPPT or maximum power point tracking charge controller. So through this 2 gauge wire, the positive side comes down to this 125 amp breaker so we can shut that off and the negative side comes over here to this bus bar. Now this is the supply side of the negative bus bar and then over here is the battery side of the negative bus bar. They're connected in the middle using this device called a shunt. Now this shunt is connected to this Victron battery monitor and it's able to measure the flow in or out of the batteries. And we're almost at completely full charge right now, which would be 49.2 volts. This is the positive bus bar here. That doesn't need a shunt. You only need the shunt on one side. Now this inverter is made by Ames, and it's a 6,000 watt low frequency inverter, meaning that there's a big giant transformer inside here. Now this is supplying 120 volts alternating current on two legs which can also be combined to 240 volt alternating current. I live in Massachusetts, United States, which uh, this is the normal electricity that we use here in this part. Here's the big positive and negative. This is supplied using 4 aught cable which goes through this big breaker back here and that's a 250 amp breaker. Now that's a bit overkill for this size inverter, but I can reduce my voltage drop and make the whole system more efficient by doing that. That 240 volts can be supplied through this outlet, which allows me to run a cord into a generator transfer switch and power the whole property if I want to. This can be turned on and off here or with the remote display. And that's the basic overview. I hope that sheds some light on the overview of the entire system. This is an off-grid and backup system. So if we have a power outage for an extended period of time, this can actually power the entire property and it can do it so long as we have uh, sunshine every day to recharge those batteries. Now if it's going to be cloudy or snowy the next day, then I have to taper off my usage to make sure that we can get it through two or three days of cloudy weather. But these are some very nice batteries, really nice setup. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And please share the video and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.